Setups like this do not happen very often. We had a 500 point day today. That's $10,000 with one contract if you were able to find it, but you probably weren't. So in this video, we're going to talk about what you could have done to be ready to be prepared, right? Luck favors the prepared. It's an old saying that I like to say. It's something that I think of. If you're in the right place at the right time, if you show up all the time, you'll get lucky. You hear of people starting to make 10,000% ROI in a random trade. Well, it's probably because they're always looking. They're ready. They're prepared. You have to be prepared. And part of being prepared is just showing up every single day. So I caught a part of the big move today. I didn't catch the entire thing, but there were signs that the market was going to fall off a cliff, which is why you need to watch the rest of this video so that you can be prepared the next time the market makes a big move. If you're new here, my name is Forrest. I enjoy helping people learn how to trade as well as learn about general finance. I'm also going to start talking a little bit about long-term investing again, something I haven't done, but it is a big passion of mine. Something that I actually think is a little bit more relatable. So check out, I'm actually going to do a special series on that actually investing dollars live. I've been mulling this idea over for months, actually think about the best way to share this type of content. So I'm going to start an account from scratch and do long-term investing and just share that over time. It's something that I think is critically important. One of my least favorite things about finance, YouTube in general is how inaccessible and unrelatable a lot of content creators are. So I'm going to show you what it looks like to invest every single day. We'll go through the ups and downs together. So definitely subscribe. You won't want to miss that. And of course, if you're a trader, because you're looking at my channel right now called Force Force Trading, make sure you subscribe. Join us in the Discord. We day trade live every single day day 9 30 a.m to 11 and then we very often stay on after that do power hour and things like that but we would love to have you join there's a seven day free trial I've been trading for a long time made a lot of money made over half a million dollars in gamestop had a ton of other six-figure trades the whole sh -ba bang all right uh, anyways let's take a look at today's market so we're looking at the two charts that i look at every single day es s p 500 futures as well as nq on the right side nasdaq Futures. We're going to start on the four hours, it's a little messy, so we're going to clean it up. I'm going to show you what I saw, and then we're going to jump over to NQ. Okay, so this is the four hour chart. I like to do all of my analysis starting here, really, as well as the higher time frames, but we'll, we'll anchor around the four hour. I think the four hour chart is a good intermediary time frame for doing this type of analysis. So we'll get rid of all of our indicators except for the volume profile, and we're going to go back in time. So a few days ago, I did a video basically looking for a long out of this area. The reason I was looking for a long out of this area was because of the volume shelf down here below. So you can see there's a big volume shelf here at 5245 area. This got built in a little bit more as we, we came down into these prices and we bounced out of it. Now, trading is like poker. Nothing is certain. So this trade worked out this time and most times it would. We're playing probabilities, but there's always a chance it doesn't work out. I want to call that out. So I was right this time, not right all the time. Something that's very, very important as a trader is just mostly being right. You're going to be wrong. So one of the things you have to ask yourself here is, is there any reason to go short at this price? Not really. The market is an auction. And so technically it could go down. But why play for the exception? It doesn't make sense. If you do that, you're going to lose money because you're always chasing unlikely outcomes. And this is going to really become a point later in the video because we you will catch big wins just by playing smart. So the market comes up, does its thing. Cool, cool, cool. And we come up into this, this high volume node area. So we come up to this high volume node area. It eventually rejects and we get this big sell off. So how could we have seen the sell off on the lower time frames? Let's go to the 15 minute and we'll turn on some of the things that I use on the lower time frames, primarily the session volume profile. We'll just start with this and then eventually we'll turn on VWAP. So we'll get rid of the visible range volume profile. Also, if you're curious on how to use a volume profile, check out, go to my YouTube channel and search for volume profile. You'll find a video where I go through the volume profile in depth, but really quickly, the volume profile is a representation of volume at prices. The market is a double-sided auction where buyers are competing against buyers and sellers are competing against sellers. What does that mean? Well, imagine, imagine you want to sell something. Somebody else is trying to sell the same thing. You guys are in competition. So how do you win in a sell-off, right? You offer better prices. So if I offer $10 and he's like, nope, I'm going to offer $9. You're like, wait a second, I'm going to offer $8. And he's like, wait a second, I'm going to offer $7. So you're competing. Imagine the buyers. Buyers are competing against each other as well. If you want to buy something, you're like, all right, I'll offer $10. And someone else is like, wait, no, I'll offer 11 Sell it to me. And the other guy's like, no, I'll offer 12 So buyers are competing against buyers. Sellers are competing against sellers. It's not really buyers against sellers. People say that all the time. I don't think it makes sense because 
Buyers buy from sellers and sellers sell to buyers. They're not competing against each other. Sellers are competing against sellers and buyers are competing against buyers. Makes way more sense. And I promise you it's going to probably a light bulb went off in your head right there. Anyways, we have this double top right here, right out the value area high. So let's actually rewind the chart a little bit. We'll go here and let's figure out where we're bouncing out of. So it's midday. We had this little buy up at 830. We, we did have some data today. I had a nice little long. I was actually up quite a bit already. Just uh, held a swing long, but that's not really important for this video. How would we have got some intuition about the afternoon here? So let's turn on our VWAP here to see where we're finding support. So go figure. We're actually finding... V uh, support at VWAP point of controls just a little bit higher the point of control is the place where there's the most volume within in this case this session within my volume profile indicator so I will move the chart forward in time every one of these is a 15 minute candle we come up here let's actually go to the five minute we'll let this recalculate recalculate enhance sorry I'm just it's late I'm just saying stuff at this point I'm crazy subscribe to my channel subscribe so we come up here and you got to ask yourself so we bounce off of this do I want to look for a breakout here? There's always, every single time the market does this, every single time the market does this, every single time, people go long right here. They always go long here. They don't go long down here because down here they're going short. And then up here they're going long, which is terrible. It's terrible, terrible, terrible because the market's usually going to range. Let's just say it's 80% of the time. It doesn't really matter what it is. You can go and just look left. Go look left at your chart at every session and ask yourself, okay, how often is the market just running in one direction? It very often isn't. There's a lot of overnight action and things like that where it sweeps the highs and lows to make its pattern. Within a session, it's, it's going to range. It's going to range a little bit, if not a lot. So we come up here if you have to ask yourself, okay, well, we know there's this people trapped here. So there's liquidity here. We're sweeping into it. This is the best place to short. If you want to short, and it drives me nuts when people short elsewhere, right here you have a bunch of green, 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 and you're like, man, it feels like it's so strong. I shouldn't short. This is exactly where you should short, guys. This is the place to do it. This is the highest point of the day. It's so simple, and I know it's so painful in real time to want to short here after all this green, but this is where you short. So if you go short here, you can see that we do get a little bit more consolidation. This is also an M pattern. So you could predict the M. I was predicting an M because the market has been printing a lot of M shapes recently. What do I mean by that? So the M shape is this. The reason I like the M is because it gives you a predictable take profit. My take profit is the beginning of the M. So in this case, it would be 5281. So I was short. I took this short. 5281 is my take profit. I took the short on NQ, but same TA regardless. This is where I would be looking. Really, you could look at the open of this data candle down here. Do option J. This is my take profit. This is my take profit. So I mentioned earlier about playing the odds, right? If you want to get lucky, luck favors the prepared. Well, I'm short already. And what do we get, right? The market starts falling off a cliff. Boom, boom, bam. With speed. Now, I'm expecting it to come off, but there's a lot of volume on this candle. Look at this candle here at 155. There's more volume in this candle than, I mean, there's equal volume here at 12.05, but that's it outside of the open. So I got to ask myself, do I think it's going to bounce at this level? At this point, I might just want to hold, right? Just hold my short. We run through this price. So my M thesis is printed. I already collected the money but for that. But at this point, I should be looking lower. I should be zooming out. And this is the mistake that most people make is you're looking at the chart like this. You're looking at it like I'm looking at it right now. And I, I know you're doing this. You're doing this. You're like, I don't know where to take profit. Is it going to sweep this? Is it going to sweep this? No, it's going to sweep something way over here, way over here. You got to zoom out. Market's moving faster. It's already beat your expectations. So look further. So what do we get? Keeps going. What are some other liquidity targets down here? Well, I have 52.53 and I have this major trend line down here to look for. So I'm, I'm zooming way out. We've already sweeped this point of control. You see we're at 52.66. We keep going. It's pushing. It's pushing. It's pushing. It's pushing. And lo and behold, we get all the way down to these lower prices. So this trend line, which seemed unreachable at first, and I'll turn off these indicators just so you can see what it looks like. Now is very much in reach. So this TA becomes useful. This was resistance before. We've got another touch here. I'll just show you all the touches of this. So there's one touch, two touch, three touch. We crack it. Four touch, five touch, six touches, like a bunch of touches in there. Seven touches, eight touches, nine touches. And then we scroll to the right and we're about to get 10 touches. The, uh, things stop moving and it goes through. So then we get 10 touches and it actually goes through it. This is the most I would have looked for is this trend line. I would not have, have held any longer than that. I mean, that's a little crazy at that point. Doesn't really matter. Just shows you how simple TA can be effective for choosing price targets. Okay. So the key here 
was that first we were positioned based off of just simple TA on the lower time frames. I had an M pattern set up that I expected. I have TA on the highers because I could see the M on the lowers. And because I have TA on the highers, even though this beat my expectations, I still had a take profit, another target that I could choose. So even if I got out of the short and I got back in, I'm not sweating bullets because I have a level here where I could take profit. I have a level here where I could take profit. These are all areas. There's a sweep here that I could take profit. We could see here that there's consolidation at this level previously where I could take profit. So, so you need to do TA on the hires always first because when you have these unexpected events, especially when you're watching the number go from 500 to 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000. You're going to be freaking out. You're freaking out. Oh, crap. I should take profits. Well, maybe. No one ever lost money making money, but maybe you need to let it run. Right? Letting it run, having these outsized days is how you make a lot of money. Whether you're prop trading or real trading or trading Pokemon cards, whatever it is that you're doing, you can be trading luck, you're trading coffee beans, you're trading computers, you're trading cats. Don't trade cats. It's probably illegal. Don't do that. I'll hunt you down. But that's how you could do it. So, just zooming out, so this was an exceptional day, 500 points. We ha we've had some days like this in the past. It kind of came out of nowhere because we, we've been in a tighter range. Still exceptional nonetheless. I mean, we, we did hit a macro line, and we'll say that. So it didn't get like outside of the macro range. You can see we're still within this macro range, but very, very surprising. So this is the ES chart. If we go over to NQ and look at it on NQ, we can see that 500-point drop right that I mentioned. So from here to here. 512 points. And you can see that I had a line here below as well on NQ where we went to, right? Macro. Let's zoom out. And we just have the trend line. Like it's so stupid how simple the market is. It's actually so stupid how simple it is. We get here and we're finding some support. They front ran it a little bit. Maybe I can adjust my line. I don't remember where this this line came from, to be honest. It actually I actually have no idea where that line came from. Maybe it's a projection from further back that I, I shortened. Nonetheless, we came up right to that trend line. I'll have to figure that one out after this video. Oh, I know what it is. It's because the, uh, no, actually, that's not what it is. Y'all have to figure that out. This must be a projection from further back. Well, in any case, we came to this trend line. We found support there. This trend line is also this level 18,072. Let's turn on our visible range volume profile and let's see what shelves we have here. So this is a one, two, three, third bounce to this low here. You see that there is a little bit of a, a shelf right here. There's an LVN at 18,049. So it makes sense to find a little bit of support here, right? We can actually see that there is support going back to all of these days. It's never random. Never, ever, 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 ever random. A ton, ton of support here at this price. A lot of people buying at this price, right, historically. That's, I actually didn't notice that earlier today. So uh, yeah, very, very simple, guys. It's, it's very, very simple. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. You found it helpful. More importantly, if you want real-time trading tips, uh, join us in our Discord. We day trade live again, 9.30 a.m., uh, to 11 a.m. The link for that is wap.com slash trade edge. Check us out. Hit me up and I'm happy to help however I can. Shoot me a DM on Instagram. Uh, shoot me a DM on Discord. Ask us a question in the free chat on the trading floor, wherever you can find us. I would love to help. See you in the next video. Peace. Did I hit record? I think I did. You know how sad I would be?